I have been using Microsoft Edge for well over a year and oh boy, do you all cook me in the comments. I recently started re-experimenting with uh, Firefox, but it's just the, the UI feels like it's from like 2014. The performance is noticeably different versus Chromium based web browsers and it's just not my thing. That is until this right here. This is the Zen browser. I'm opening it up for the very first time on this computer but I have been using it for a little bit on my uh, M1 MacBook Air, and oh boy, do I like it. But first, a big thank you to our sponsor, GeoAO, and their 2.1 channel soundbar. With quad bass and dual full range speakers, this 190 watt soundbar features Adobe Atmos, HDMI Arc, and more. Check the link down below for 15% off and stacked with our coupon code, this thing comes in at under $100. Also stay tuned for more information and a sound comparison at the end of this video. It is an alpha release, so they're missing a lot of features. There's a lot of things we're gonna cover here, but this right here is the initial kind of setup. We're gonna go ahead and go next. We have our preferred color choice. Let's go with an orange, keep it at the dark theme, go next. We can import our data, that works very well. Again, this is a fresh install, so I have no data to import here. Uh, let's continue. You pick your default search engine, which Wikipedia is an interesting choice for sure. Uh, we're gonna go with Google for now. Let's go next, and there we go. So it's gonna drop us in and drop us into the welcome page of their website. What this is, is a Firefox browser with a focus on privacy and customization. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, typical Ubuntu panel here so we can see things a little bit better. And let's jump over to their homepage here. Beautifully designed, privacy focused and packed with features. The very first thing they really mention here is performance, goodbye to bad performance. So we click this, we can see we have some benchmarking scores and whatnot. Uh, they don't have any comparisons to other browsers. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is go over my personal testing and all these tests were done on a M1 MacBook Air. So this is the article that's gonna go up with this uh, video. And right here we have my specific benchmarks. And we can see it is still falling behind the Chromium browsers, but we do see a significant uh, performance increase in this alpha release on a Basemark web, which is kind of a generalized test that tests a bunch of different things. Firefox scoring 1034, with the Zen browser scoring 1,188, falling behind Chrome by a margin and uh, Edge by a smaller margin here. So again, in general benchmarking, they did have a uh, performance increase. We did some other tests, uh, Speedometer 3.0, as well as Jetstream 2. This one comes in last place in just about everything. But again, it is an alpha release and I'm looking forward to them making some improvements. This right here alone is awesome. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves here, I do want to show you kind of the general UI and changes here. Uh, it's pretty typical. A lot of the menus you go to are gonna be very resemblant of Firefox, even here, search mozilla.org for various add-ons. Hit this menu here. It all looks very familiar if you're a Firefox user. The one thing that is different is the default here, how the tabbing works on the side. We could see if I switch over here, this is the uh, post I was just on, go down, we have the privacy policy. These right here are the tabs. And I can make this a little bit bigger by clicking on this button right here. And then we could see the full name and all that. And you could see I'm under the default workspaces. There are workspaces, which I'll get into in just a minute. But from here, you can manage your tabs. You can move them around. You can close them out. You can group them and have various split views. And if we go down here, we have quick access to this right here. This is the Zen sidebar. Close that out for now. We have our favorites right here. We have our history and then we have our settings. Now they do have some of their own stuff in here, but a lot of this is very resemblant of what you would see in Firefox. For example, if we scroll all the way down here, we have our network settings. Here you can add proxies directly into your browser, which is cool. For look and feel, we have option to change the color that you saw when we first got on. We have pilled buttons, so you can change that if you'd like to. There will be more things that appear here when we go over to their theme and kind of extension store specific for this browser. And here we have other stuff such as workspaces. You can enable or disable that. We have our various keyboard shortcuts for some of these split views. And then you can do home, search, privacy and security, a lot of typical stuff. But one of the main differences and the first thing I want to show you is within their website, if we go over to getting started and go to the theme store, this is what they got so far. Again, this just released maybe a couple weeks ago. This is an alpha release, so there's not a lot going on here. But what is, is cool. We have bookmark toolbar tweaks. We have floating URL bar. And I want to show you how quick it is to add one of these. All of these are done with like CSS files. But if I go to the floating URL bar, so before I add this, if I click this, you can see it's just typical behavior. But if I click install theme, it is 
immediate. And then if I click it, we have that floating URL bar. So then we could do whatever we wanted there. And then just to uninstall this, click uninstall, click over here, you can see it's gone. Simple as that. Another example of something is like private mode highlighting. If I go over here, open a new private window, uh, there's not really much change, but if I add this, hit install theme, and before we open that, I wanna show you that some of these themes include custom settings. So if I go over here to settings, go over to look and feel, now you could see private mode highlighting. We do have some specific options for this theme. And if I go over here by default, this is what it's gonna look like. You could see it added that nice kind of a purple accent to the window. So it just adds some feel and detail to it, which is very nice. Now on the topic of their themes, if I go over here and I go to the source code, which is just their GitHub page here, you can see the theme store. Here it goes over how to submit and create themes, which is very nice. I'm really excited as this gains popularity to see what people come up with and what is added to this. But if I go over here to themes, for example, and open up a random one, not sure what these are. Ah, here it is, private browsing toolbar highlighting. What a lucky pick. <laughs> we have the readme, we have a theme JSON file, which just imports data for or information for the theme. What is really going on over here is the Chrome CSS, not to be confused with uh, Google Chrome. This is the entire file for this theme, and you can see how it changes everything, how it changes the background color. It's really simple stuff to actually create one of these, even if you wanted to create one yourself. But now on to some of the other features. One of them that I'm re really enjoying is the uh, kind of split view thing they have going on. And it's not perfect yet. There are a lot of things missing that I think could be added. Uh, if I go to some random website such as techhut.tv, and then I wanted to split view this. All I do is hold shift, select both of these, and then split the two tabs. And now you can see I have a nice side-by-side -side view, which looks absolutely magnificent. Now a problem with it is I can't really like unsplit this view that I've noticed unless if I like close one of the tabs. So if I go over here, you can see split two tabs. I can't do anything there. Um, close two tabs is the option. Uh, there's no, no way to unsplit it that I can see unless if I actually like close one of these out, which it closed both of them out. So <laughs> there's some work to do. Additionally, one thing I really like if I open up a couple more websites here, Zen Browser, TechHut.tv, if I select three of these here, right click, split three tabs, look at that. We have a nice little uh, kind of tiling window view. Um, I don't think there's a way to move these or resize them, which is another feature that would be absolutely marvelous. And really the only feature that I've noticed is if I dive over here back to settings and go to the keyboard shortcuts, we have the uh, split grid, vertical, horizontal, and close split view. Actually, this might be how to do it without uh, control alt U. So if I go uh, control alt U, ha ho, it keeps them all open. So I was wrong, that's good to know. Uh, if we split these three tabs again, what's the shortcut for vertical? So control alt V. So control alt V. Boy. All right, so that's not working. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this split view feature. I know other browsers do have this. Uh, Vivaldi is one that comes to the top of my head. And I do know a lot of people don't really use this feature because you could just have multiple windows, drag and drop them, use your actual window manager on your system to manage your various browser windows. But I like it because like I mentioned a couple times, I use a M1 MacBook Air quite a bit and window management for Apple devices is wretched. So I do kind of rely on something like this to have a lot more kind of flexibility. This isn't too flexible as of yet, but it, hopefully it will be soon. Now, this is my default workspace here. You can see right here, current window, default workspace. If I wanted to move these to a different workspace, so if these were something to do with business, school, whatever, all I would do is right click and change tab to workspace. There's none, so I need to make one first. So let's go here. Let's click this little button to make a new workspace. Let's just call this work and then create the workspace. Ooh, we could pick a little uh, emoticon. Let's select that one, create the workspace, and there we go. So now it switched out. So if I go default, work, switch back and forth, and now I can move some of these windows here to the new workspace. So if I go to change workspaces to work, they're now over here, and then I can kind of separate my workflows that way if I would like to. This You did see it said it's an experimental feature, so 
note that. Now, one thing I really like and I've grown accustomed to in some other web browsers is this right here. This is the sidebar. Now this kind of acts separate than all the other, um, well, when it comes to like the tabbing system and all that. Here, these are the defaults. We have um, Wikipedia, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and a couple of others. And this is really nice because it kind of gives you like a mobile browsing format. So if I go like YouTube, for example, it's gonna go ahead and open that up and then I could have videos and uh, various things in here. I could go ahead and add something if I wanted to. So if I wanted like Gmail, we're on caps. If I wanted gmail.com, so now if I go over here, it's gonna load up Gmail and I can manage my email through here, stay logged in, just close this out and like, oh, wanna check my email, pop this and it's there and just ready to go. And you switch between these like this and it all kind of stays independent and kind of keeps that session in there. The home button just goes to the home of whatever this like kind of little web app thing is set to. And you have its own independent navigation, forward, back, refresh, if I hit the X, it will close it out completely, but if I hit this little kind of minimize, it will make it float. I can't drag it around, which I hope is something that they add, but that's nice if you just wanted a little quick access without kind of moving around the content that's on the screen, that, that's a, a welcome feature. And if we close some of these out real quick and go over to their website, we can kind of see some of the other stuff that's going on. They have a new compact mode. So to kind of demo that, if I go ahead and re-minimize this, this kind of shows all the time. But if I did go into, I believe, settings, let's go compact, see where it's at. There it is, show in compact mode. So if we check this, now if I hover over here, you can see it just kind of floats in. So it will keep that out of the way, give you even more screen real estate. And if I hide the top toolbar too, we'll look at that. It does the same thing for the top, so you can use your entire screen for the content and it will auto hide the, basically the UI of the browser. For now, I'm going to disable that. Additionally, if you're somebody who is coming from Microsoft Edge like myself, you can move this to the side. So if I do uh, tabs on right, boop, everything's over here. Wonderful. So then I could just change to the default workspace and life is good. And I wonder if I open up the sidebar, okay, it still opens over there instead of over here. So yeah, that is Zen browser. It's slightly faster than Firefox as far as I can tell. And I, I, for the most part, have been enjoying it. If we go back to their homepage here, you could see how Zen compares to other browsers and they're comparing themselves to some of the other kind of Firefox forks that add some customizations and their own things, which of course they're gonna market themselves with all of the green checks going down, but <laughs> it is what it is. It's definitely one of the better implementations of a kind of Firefox fork. This is really, it's like what Edge is to Chromium or Google Chrome. It's just kind of a rebranded, reskinned web browser. But a lot of these other ones don't really add too much. Florp I know does, Florp is a good one. But like LibreWolf and some of the others, eh, granted if you are a privacy focused individual, LibreWolf is a fantastic option. This just feels like the, uh, the Edge version of Firefox, which, I like. Down here, going over some of the features I covered, these are the, like the three main things at the moment. And again, we can head over to their GitHub page and kind of check everything out from there. They have recently gotten a huge amount of stars, big popularity boost, as you can see right here. That's one of the reasons why I found it. And you can see here that their uh, preferences are based on Better Fox. So if you open that up, you can kind of see what that is. If you're not interested in this browser and you are a Firefox user, uh, Better Fox might be something you are interested in checking out. So yeah, this browser is available on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and it is available as a flat pack for basically all Linux systems. Now, back to the sound bar here. This was probably the perfect addition to my bedroom TV and eventually I am going to mount it right under the TV with the brackets that are pre-included. I've been testing it with the optical cord and it sounds awesome. Here's a real quick side-by-side -side with the TV I have upstairs. Goes on, honey, huh, my baby. Goes on, honey, huh, my baby. This thing does come with its own remote that has options for an equalizer, bass, and more. And it does give a great immersive effect even though it's coming from a single unit here. I recommend it and again, do check the link down below as well as the coupon code to shave off an additional percent on top of whatever coupons they may have available. With all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below and I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.